think one of the things discussed or one of the findings that they've had is that SMEs do not necessarily see ESG as a priority current, and they're still trying to grasp the benefits and significance of ESG adoption. Uh, a study done by the local institution uh, b- before this found that SME cited increased costs as a disincentive for ESG adoption. And it's not a compelling proposition for them, uh, considering that SMEs, many of the SMEs are still reeling from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic still, right? So what you have here is huge impact on the economy, uh, perhaps not so ready and not so able to address ESG risk. So you're looking at a a segment that's actually quite vulnerable to ESG risks, right? Um, and even so, as it, instances of natural hazards become more frequent and more intense, um, that vulnerability increases. In 2015, for example, we had a huge, in Malaysia, basically, we have flood risk, which is the predominant uh, natural risk that we have here, or physical risk. In 2015, we had floods in Kelantan, for example, 13,000 SMEs were affected with about 1 billion ringgit in estimated losses. Uh, in the more recent floods in December 2021, the estimate, estimated losses were more around to the tune of about 6 billion ringgit. And 30%, 35% of SMEs affected were in the economically critical Klang Valley area. And these disruptions have caused uh, disruptions in supply chain and business co- continuity. And is exacerbated even further by the lack of take up of natural disaster insurance. The coverage, I think, was estimated at only 10% of the December 21, 2021 flood losses.